So much stuff to do. Upgrade for my server. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, Happy New Year, everyone. Hope you're uh, all doing well. If I sound nasally, I'm really sorry. I'm, I'm still getting over... I don't know what it was. It, it wasn't flu. It wasn't man flu. It was somewhere in between. It's taken me nearly two weeks to get over it, but I'm still, still got it a little bit. We'll get on with it anyway. I thought I'd just run through, because I, I did this in a video a few months ago, um, how to install FreeBSD, but that was inside Hyper-V. So let's do it on real hardware from beginning to end and, and then have a look at what we can do after. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is select a USB disk because we're going to go off to FreeBSD's website. We're going to download the image and we're going to install it. So let's get on and do that. I'm doing my image creation on Windows 11. It's the same process on any Windows. Slightly different if you're doing it on FreeBSD or on Linux or on Mac OS. Look up how to burn a USB disk from an ISO image and you should be all right. Just follow the instructions. I'm going to use Rufus because that's just how I've done it. I think you can get Rufus on Mac OS and I think you can get it on Linux. Not sure. Don't quote me. Don't quote me. But if not, you could always use DD on any of those OSs, and that's pretty much independent. Uh, just just find your command to do that. Make sure you choose the right disk. So let's head off to FreeBSD, and let's download the image. Now, I, I mentioned in a previous video that 14 is now out, and that's the one we're going to concentrate on today. If you notice here, there are a few different images pick the one that is right for your hardware i'm using just a standard tiny pc so it's going to be amd 64 something relatively newish when i say newish i mean within 10 years so it's a 64-bit os quick side note on that this is the last freebsd version that will support i386 everything else will be 64-bit so please bear that in mind so there's also images there for PowerPC, ARM V7, and RISC-V 64, and ARCH 64. ARM V7 is what your your uh, your Pi-based PCs will be built on. We're not using that. We're using AMD 64. So if we click on that link, it will start. No, it won't. This, this is on me. If we click on that link, it will take you to the page on which one to get. You can get a boot only or a disk one that doesn't have any extras in, because space is not an issue for me and my USB disk is a 16 gig disk I'm going to download the DVD which is usually 4.5 gig ish there we go yeah so we're going to get that one you can get the compressed one if you want to save bandwidth or anything like that so we're just going to download that now with Rufus you can also use a memstick image but I'm not going to while that's downloading let's go off and get Rufus here it is there's a beta version oh, that's good you can get it for ARM64 as well. I have Rufus. I wonder what version I have. Yeah, I have 4.3. So I already have a newer version. So I'm not going to download it, but literally just click on which one you want. Portable's always good. You can take it wherever you want. I've just got the standard one. Let's see how long we got left. Four minutes. We'll wait for that. If you hear some funny noises today, I do apologise. Our new kitten has decided to come in with me. Let me just get a quick shot of him just sat there what is it about kittens and boxes just falling asleep I don't expect him to fall to sudden I don't expect him to stay asleep he's absolutely crackers all right we have downloaded there it is so here is my ISO I'm going to move it because I don't keep ISOs in there. I keep ISOs in here and I've already got it. 
so let's get rid of that okay right so we've got our download there it is so let's find our rufus 4.3 now i always run it as administrator it will probably ask to be run as administrator anyway it's just the way i do it so there's my 16 gig usb disk let's select the iso so there you go you've got your mem stick it does use mem sticks if you want it to and there's our release dvd so let's use that one today's date and let's start it now this will take a few minutes depending on the speed of your usb disk now this is only a usb 2 so it will be quite slow probably should have used a usb 3 disk but there we go see because i haven't done this for quite a while i haven't checked over my audio settings for my audio interface i think the last video i recorded was the second week of december and i recorded enough to get me through christmas because historically i get sick over christmas don't know why change in weather i guess and it's proven to be the case again this year <laughs> so you will notice that there's some options there that are going on so it's chosen the iso it's chosen the petition scheme as gpt and it's chosen UEFI, non-CSM. So we need to make sure that when we're booting into our PC, that those options match. And we'll do that once, once we've got this USB burn. Actually, I might just check that out while it's burning. There we go. So CSM is disabled and it's UEFI only. And there's all the options that it can boot from. And the other thing to check out is that secure boot is turned off because that's just a Microsoft tax that I'm assuming FreeBSD isn't willing to pay without getting political. So we're about halfway through the uh, burning, the writing of the image to the disc. We're way through half of our coffee and the cat is still asleep. That's a good sign. He may actually leave us alone. Coming up on 70%, 68.7, 70.2, 82. I think we'll look into setting up a USB stick that has got all these images on already. I used to use something like that in my day job, my old day job. It turns out this is my day job now. That's mental. 88.7, 90.1, 94.6, 94.5. Okay, so it's finished writing and it's done. So let's close that and close that. We won't need that anymore. Let's plug in the USB. So most of this will be done on our other PC now. So let's come out of there. Let's hope it sees it. Here we go. We picked the right one, which was the USB stick and not the SK Hynix, which is the internal one. And we're gonna boot. It's gonna probe the device. And we're at our install screen. Now this is where things go a little different. So let's install and pick our language. Whichever one you are more comfortable with is the one you should pick. Mine is United Kingdom. We're just gonna call it setup. That's the host name. We don't want the kernel debug. You don't need it unless you're debugging the kernel. Now I am gonna put the test suite in. I don't know why I've started doing that, but I have been. We're gonna use auto ZFS. So let's probe the device. It's already got FreeBSD installed on this from the Mastodon setup, and it already sees that there's a Z root there. So we're gonna overwrite it by clicking OK, and we're just gonna change this one to UEFI, and we're gonna change the swap. Now this has got 16 gig of memory, so I usually go half that. I don't even know why I do that. You can go the same if you want 16, but just bear in mind that the more swap space that you use, the less you have on that disk, the less usable space you have on that disk. You could technically run without swap space if you've got tons and tons of memory. Again, I'm not sure I'd recommend that either. So there we go, there's our options. Proceed with the install. No redundancy because there's only one disk in this. You can set up any of these if you want. If you have more than one disk, if you have enough to, to do a RAID Z2, that is the one that I would always go with if resources allow. So there's our disk, 256 gig, ADA0, and are we sure? Yes, we are. 
He's snoring. Ever heard a cat snore? That's a funny sound. Just let it extract all of the uh, archives. So that's the base, the kernel, lib32 and the tests. And you'll notice that that marries up with the selection that I made. I installed lib32 and tests. The base and the kernel always extracted, otherwise there is no OS. Multiple entries in the EFI boot entries. Would I like to remove them all and add a new one? Yes, I would. Select a root password. Now, you don't have to pick a root password if you don't want to. You could always pick it and, and set it up next boot. Again, I'm of the opinion that it's better to have one, even if it's weak, on that first boot, just in case, and then change it for something stronger later. Or you can pick a, a strong one straight away. That option is entirely up to you. Networking. So there is two NICs, two network cards in this computer there is the intel i219v which is the ethernet port and then there's the intel dual band wireless ac3165 i hate wi-fi with an absolute passion so i'm not going to use it just going to pretend it's not there ipv6 yes dhcp yes it should pick it up from my pf sense box and it has now my network does have ipv6 so i'm going to say yes and yes and let it do its thing looks good to me is this machine's cmos clock set to utc now even if it's not it doesn't really matter what you choose here you can always change this later but i always click yes i don't know why just how i've always done it uh time zone so select where you're from hopefully you know that i'm in europe and i'm in the united kingdom and gmt looks reasonable to me that's the correct date so i'm going to skip that that's the correct time skip that and local services i always pick those and i always unpick that and for some reason i always put mouse d on i don't know why if you're running a laptop power d is always a good option but this isn't a laptop although the hardware is based on laptop hardware you'll notice there is no disable sendmail anymore because sendmail has gone it's now dragonflies uh, smtp I believe I can't remember the name of it but anyway I'm gonna disable D D trace and then add a system user you can go through this and leave all the defaults or you can change them it's up to you bear in mind that if you leave the login group as the same as the username you won't be able to SU you to root you'll need to either pick staff or wheel I always pick wheel it's probably not a good practice, probably better off picking staff. I'm going to stick it into operator and video, just in case, might come in handy later. Default class, love CSH as my shell, home directory. Now also, the home directories has changed slightly as well. And I noticed this before, when I tried to CD to home, it might have been on 15 current. That, that link, that symbolic link had gone and it was just use a local home now or use a home I can't remember which one anyway uh, besides the buy yes for password based no for an NT1 no for a random pick your password and no to lock out the account you can lock it out and then unlock it later no other users for now and that's pretty much it that should be everything installed would I like to open a shell and make any final manual modifications no so let's reboot it while it's rebooting we'll pull out the usb uh, syncing discs la, da, 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 da. let's see what happens there we go freebsd installed and booting up and you should see the host name as setup when it's uh, got to its login prompt before i think it was um masked so that's how we know there we go setup so login as root and there we go we are now up and running with FreeBSD. Difficulty level, it's probably a four out of 10. It's not It's not difficult. It's not straightforward by any stretch of the imagination. It's not just put in a USB and leave it, but it's fairly self-explanatory. So what can we do next? The first thing I would do was to would be to install my text-based editor, because you're gonna use that quite a lot. Now my personal favorite is Pico Alpine. You install which one you, you feel comfortable with. You could also just use EE, Easy Editor. That's built into FreeBSD. You could use Vi, I think. Oh, yeah, I don't like Vi. <laughs> Cannot get on with it. So I'm gonna go package, install Pico Alpine. Package is not installed, it's gonna install itself. Very clever how it does that. I'm not installed, but I'm gonna install myself. 
probably not as clever as it seems, but there we go. So that's that. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change my packages from quarterly, because that's what they normally are, to latest. Uh, so package, probably not a good idea to change this particular file. You should probably set it up in user local etc pkg repos, but because if you make mistakes like that, you could be wondering what's going on. So let's upgrade everything. There you go, it's changed Perl from 534 to 536. Now I know that 536 is the default in the latest package repository. So what can we do from there? Well, we can do a lot of things. We can install a graphical call. I can't speak today. We can install a graphical interface if we want. We can install services for running servers. Or we can install games. Whatever you want to do, you can do it from here. I'm not really going to do much of that right now because I've done videos on that before. But you can certainly install KDE or, or GNOME or any of the other environments that you want. There are easier ones to use as well, less heavy on system resources. KDE is my favourite. Just think it looks the best. But there you go, that is literally how you set up FreeBSD on a PC. Hope you find that useful. Um, please do leave comments down below. There will be a link to my Discord server down there as well. Don't forget to share, like, all of that. Subscribe if you want to. It doesn't cost you anything. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.